Hello, and welcome to this presentation of the Zoom platform for the Landy project. In this training, we will cover the fundamentals of the platform, as well as some tips and tricks to make your lessons more interactive for our students. So where do we start? Well, let's start with before the lesson. The first thing we need to do is log in. So let's double click on the Zoom icon and do just that. Remember, if you want Zoom to remember your information, make sure you click on Keep Me Logged In before you hit Sign In. Once logged in, we are greeted by the platform menu you see here. Click the Meeting tab at the bottom and make sure to click Always Use PMI for Instant Meetings on this computer. This will make sure your meeting ID doesn't change when you go from lesson to lesson. Before we start teaching, we'll need to test our microphone and headset. To do this, we will need to go to the Settings menu. This is the little gear in the upper right hand corner of the main Zoom menu. Once we click on this, we will get many different options. In the upper left hand corner, we'll see many different tabs. And we first need to go to Audio. Here we'll see Test Speaker and Test Microphone. We click on Test Speaker. You should hear sound coming over your headset. When we hit Test Microphone, it'll begin recording. When you hit Stop, it will play that back to you. Now that we've tested everything, let's take a look at a helpful feature. To find this, we'll need to go to the Video tab in the upper left hand corner. Here you should see yourself. Hello. Right underneath where it says camera, there'll be a drop down menu. And underneath that, we'll see widescreen and original ratio. Go ahead and click on original ratio. This should give you some extra space on the top and bottom and make it easier for your students to see you during your class. Now that we've tested and set everything up, it's time to start our class. To do this, we will click on Start with Video on the main Zoom menu. Once we've selected that, you'll see our video pop up, and we're good to go. Now from time to time, you'll be asked to record a lesson and send that in. To do that, you'll need to click Record at the bottom of the screen on the main toolbar. Once you've started recording, you'll see that the Record button changes to allow you to pause or stop the recording. Now that our room is open, we can go ahead and share the book material. To do this, we need to click Share Screen in the lower middle section of our screen. Once we do that, you'll get another pop-up window that has all of the open programs available. Remember, you need to have any program you want to use open and running before you start your class. So that means your media player and the PDF viewer will all need to be up and running. The first thing will be to click Share Computer Sound in the lower left hand corner. This allows the students to hear the audio that's being played from your computer. So be careful, make sure you've shut down Skype and all of the other different programs that can make sounds during your class. Next, we'll need to select the program that we want to show them. So in this case, I will select the PDF. After that, all I need to hit is Share Screen and it will be shared with my students. One shortcut for this is just to double click on the program that you want to open. This will also automatically open it. And here we are. Now the students can see the PDF. Now let's say I want to share that media player. To do that, I'll click on New Share and it'll bring up my pop-up one more time. Here in the middle we can see Warm-Up Song. So this is VLC, this is what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and double click on the media player and it should bring it up for my students. Now once I've finished this song and I want to go back to the book, again I'm going to click on New Share and then double click on the PDF Viewer. And we're back. On the student side, they went right from the book to the media player back to the book. So that's all they saw. At the start of class you want to greet your students and the best way to do that is to spotlight them. So to do this, we will need to stop sharing 
and go back to the main screen. Here we can see all the students at once. By right clicking on any one of their videos, you will find the option of Spotlight. This will make them the center of attention. Hello! How are you, Ling? Hello, I'm fine. Alright! During the class, there might be many features that could be useful to you. By right clicking on any one of their videos, you'll, you'll have many options. First we'll see Mute, Stop Video, Chat, and Rename. So the mute option, you know, if one of your students has a very noisy background, might be might be worthwhile to go ahead and mute them for the time being. When you need them to speak again, you can unmute them. Stop video. Uh, we'll use this feature when one of your students is having a really bad connection. You can't quite hear them or see them. You might just stop their video just so you can actually hear them in the class. Chat will bring up a chat window. Here you can type messages to the whole group or to individuals. Next we have rename. A lot of times in experience lessons, your students will come in with some default name like PC1 or iPhone2. Uh, and if that's the case, when you get the real name, or their English name, go ahead and rename them from there. Alright, other than that, we also have Mac, Make Host and Allow Record. Uh, neither one of these will really apply to your students, so you don't have to worry about that. The last one is Remove, so this would be to kick someone out of your room. Every once in a while this, this might come up uh, in an experience lesson or if one of your students is having uh, some real bad internet connection issues, we might have to remove them uh, and have them rejoin. During your experience lessons, you might have many CCs that have joined the room. Uh, these would be course consultants. They're basically marketing people there to watch how the students are performing. Uh, however, once you get more than four people in your Zoom room, you'll notice that you can no longer see the videos from everyone. And the CCs don't really have their video on, so they're just kind of in the way. One easy way to deal with this is to right click on any one of the turned off videos and select Hide Non-Video Participants. This will remove all of those non-video participants from your viewable area and allow you to see yourself and your two students all at the same time. If you look at the top of the video bar, you'll see four different options of viewing. The first one will hide all the videos. The second one will show one small picture of the active speaker. Next, you'll have four small videos of all of the students in the room, or one large video. During classes, we will want to select the four small boxes. This will allow you to see all of your students and make it the easiest, really, during your class. If you find that you can only see one at a time, well this is what the problem was. All you need to do is click on the four small boxes and that will resolve that. In Zoom, both you and your students can interact with the page. To do this, click on Annotate on the main toolbar. This will bring up the Annotation toolbar. From here you'll see many different options. We're going to start by looking at Draw. If you hover over the draw button, you'll see 15 different objects that can be used. The top row will tend to be the most helpful. We have a straight line we can use for underlining or matching activities. We have a box that we can put around different things that we need them to read, perhaps. We also have circle. Now, if we want to circle some object on the page, we want them to respond to. And we also have free draw. So this would be good for drawing pictures and other things like that. Next to draw, we have text. This will allow you to add some text to the page. So, first you'll click text. You'll click on the page, and this will open a text box. You can type whatever you need. And then when you click out of the text box, it will finalize. Here we have hello. <clears throat> if you see your page is getting a little bit too busy, we can use the eraser. This will get rid of one object at a time. If there are too many objects, all we have to do is go hit clear clear all drawings. This will get rid of everything all at once. Now let's take a look at format. Here we can find the color palette. We can make the line width bigger or smaller. We can increase or decrease the font size and we can bold the font. Now remember, once you've finished using any of these annotation features, you'll either need to click on mouse or spotlight to be able to change the pages of the PDF viewer. There could come a time where one of your students uses the annotation tools without your permission. 
and that could be problematic. So, to stop this, we can go to More on the main toolbar and click Disable Attendee Annotation. This will stop all of your students from using the annotation functions. If there comes a time where you need them to use them again, go ahead and click More one more time, and then you can click Enable Attendee Annotation. Either way, the teacher will still be able to use the annotation functions. But remember, once you've disabled this, it's very easy to forget that you've done it. There's no visual cue to remind you uh, to turn that back on. So I would suggest anytime you want your students to use any of those features, make sure you go check that it's actually enabled. Practicing with these functions will make your lessons more interactive and smoother. If you have any questions about Zoom, please refer back to the Zoom review guide or your trainer. Happy teaching!